O kindred soul of the land of old, I beckon your kind to this tale that unfolds, a song of arch that mustered all kind, open the doors to the misery of my kind. All this peril and chaos that was far untold began long ago in the age of the mold. All there existed was one solemn void that contained a deity of unparalleled might. All knowing ever present was the nature of this divine as it contained all evil and all the benign. For it was the sum of all that is whole, one pearl of magnificence, of brilliance untold. But such is the way of a lonely bright soul, peril would grow in its heart of gold. Aeons of struggle and unfathomable remorse raised the question that would tear its soul. This being of being, the immortal the whole, would learn of its name. I knew it was cold, for how could it be that a lonely bright soul is alone and whole and no one to behold. Its might and splendor, its fervor and wrath would mingle and dwindle in a chaotic aftermath. And so it fought for a timeless accord whilst wondering why it harbors such feelings and thoughts. While some are pleasant and others filled with dread, these jewels of existence would be woven on the thread this thread of memory would shatter and splinter, and the being would struggle and hearken its maker. But no answer was given, for it was the creator of all that existed in the wide void of winter. Troubled and tired of the endless dire conflict, it decided to end the duality of its struggle. Crack, crack, and a loud bright thunder, the pearl before the time, would crack and sunder. And then with a screech came the moment of creation, for the being was now pure and free from aberration. Overwhelmed with joy, but this joy would soon trifle, as a being now stood in the presence of the Maker, as it stared into the eyes of its very first creation. Deep it gazed and saw a reflection of its own self with a dark endeavor so different yet pure was this seven-headed monster that hatched from the pearl from the bosom of the Creator. But with pity and spite and hatred for each other that began the first battle, the conflict of eternal. And so the war waged in the time of no time. Each blow one would land would be countered by design. This design of balance that watches over all kind was also present in this first scuffle of the divine. How could one vanquish its very own souls when both eternal beings are one and whole? But in the age of no age, the struggle did end with both primal beings quelled at each other's hands. What followed were pieces of their glorious old self that scattered through the plains on emptiness so grand they laid their pieces that formed heaven and hell. For Anu was bright, an embodiment of light. Its remains would form the heavens of might. This was the birth of the Anjuris the right that would uphold Anu's will and carry on its fight. But the seven heads of dragon, of Tartmet the cruel, rested on darkness where the burning hells would rule. And so would the council of light and splendor engage the lesser and the primer heads of evil. But in this tale of clash and mighty discord, there remained one aspect of defiance to the core. For when the divines would fall and form, a collective conscience of their will was finally born. And amidst this creation was the eye of the being, the clear, the conscious, the mighty supreme. And this eye formed a land between two homes. It was neither of good, nor did evil hold a form. And so it was so that pandemonium was born. And this eye of the Creator did rest on its throne. Formless it laid, bearing witness to the eternal home. That used to be one is now fragmented and scorned, where heaven and hell would wage a war that would transcend all time 
and leave all scarred. Fortress and worlds would rise and fall at the heart of this conflict where destiny would call. The chosen few souls, tired of endless war, would seek the eye of who was nothing but charred. To kindred souls that were different to their very core, settle their dispute and sheet their swords. An angel named Inarius would rally the tired souls and would hold an agreement with the Lilith, the princess so bold that both would agree to live in a new world that welcomed all, or welcomed souls that sought to save haven from the trauma that now was the eternal war. Both factions of light and evil, both exiles in their own accord, would live in a world of harmony, and sanctuary it was called. A new world of hope and freedom, where souls may love and grow. So did the lonesome warriors open their heart and their soul to their fellow being, and it did not matter what allegiance at last hold, for love is stronger than all, and conquers the unconquerable above all. So were born the Nephilim, the offsprings of the tired souls, who now had a place, a home they could call their own. And so it came to be, for the ages that were too short, peace would finally be broken, when the warring forces would know of this home. But that tale of mine is for another day, another night and storm. So here I stand before you, this hermit of age far gone, do stop, O weary traveller, in your next visit to my humble abode, where I shall continue the tale of the cursed war of old.